my third time speaking at Work Camp London. I graduated to the big kids room. This is the first time I speak in this room. It's kind of really big. <laughs> um, but thank you. Thank you for being here first thing in the morning. So uh, my name is Francesca. You probably already know from my accent <laughs> that I'm Italian. <laughs> this is the very thick accent. I'm from Torino. I am the WordPress community manager at SiteGround, the international web hosting company. Um, before doing that, I was a freelancer uh, building websites for other freelancers and my first year in business was a complete disaster. So <laughs> this talk was born from that experience. And I'm honestly very happy to be the first speaker here. It's always a bit intimidating to be the one that breaks the ice for everyone else. But I'm happy because I think in the next few days you're going to learn a lot uh, about WordPress, and hot topics, as Anna said, and that will help you become a better professional, you improve your professional skills. But if you're not a good business owner and you don't know how to run your business, then you have a problem. You can be the best developer in the world, you can be the best web designer in the world, but if you don't know how to run your business, hi Janice, <laughs> to run your business, uh, that is a problem. So here we go. Um, Last week I heard Marco Chiesi, who was also Italian, who was also speaking at work in London in Track City right now, that uh, we all learn from mistakes, um, and if we l can learn from someone else's mistakes, it's even better. <laughs> so I hope uh, that by sharing my failures, I will save you some heartburn, headache, and some money. <laughs> I don't normally talk a lot about myself, but this is really the topic of the talk. So I'm going to go through a brief history of my business. In 2008, I opened a website on WordPress.com um, as a new mom to talk about my kid. Like most new moms do, we think they are the most special creatures ever. So I started a blog <laughs> to talk about that and share pictures. And then in 2010, I moved it to WordPress.org. I remembered I took an HTML class in 1998, and I was like, why not tinkering around with this website? So I started to change my template, add stuff, and suddenly people asked me, can you do the same for me? I will pay you. Really? You're going to pay me to do this, to play around <laughs> with a template? And I was like, yeah. So I started having clients. Uh, unwillingly, basically. <laughs> and in 2011, I felt that was going pretty well. I had a bunch of people asking me to do that, so I started freelancing as a side gig. And in, then in 2012, I felt I was ready to go. I was going to become a web designer or a website builder or whatever you call the people that tinker around with templates. It went horribly. In the first eight months of being in business, I spent way more than I earned. <laughs> um, half of that money went into life, so it was money well spent, bills, rent, food. But I have to be honest, a good part of that money went in things that were not so necessary for my business. A lot of it went into self-training. Now, don't let, get me wrong, continuous learning is very important as a professional, no matter what you do. But I found out that for me, the self-training method, e-courses, e-books, they don't hold me accountable. So I just have a huge folder in Dropbox <laughs> with e-courses, e-books, e-something that I never finished. Um, I also bought myself a new computer because obviously when you invoice only 2,000 euros, you need a 2,000 euros machine. <laughs> and they say that's not the tool that makes the professional and stuff like that. Well, I believed I really needed a good computer to do that. And then I'll be honest, I took a lot of days off. Because what's the thing? We go into business as freelancers because we want to be free. We want to work our own hours. We want to have a good work-life balance. Well, that made for very few billable hours. <laughs> so that was the wrong thing to do in the first few months of my business. So I had to go back 
to work in an office at the time I lived in Israel. Uh, I found the work as an administrative manager, and I did that. But people kept asking me to do the website. I gained some popularity through my blog and social media. So people keep asking me to build the websites, and I decided to do it. So I was working during the day as an administrative manager, and at night and during weekends as a website maker. Uh, not so great for your work-life balance, <laughs> but it gave me the opportunity to go back, revisit my mistakes, learn more about WordPress, and become a better businesswoman. Fast forward a year, more or less, and I was able to quit my job again and go solo again. Uh, at the end of the 2013, I billed about uh, 18,000 euros, which might sound a very <laughs> little money, especially if you live in London, that's probably three months' rent. But <laughs> at the time, I lived in Israel, and I had a very, uh, very good fiscal format that allows people that start up their business to invoice up to that point without basically paying any taxes. So that was tax-free, it was great, it allowed me uh, to live comfortably. So what happened in those more or less 12 months? How I was able to go back and go, get to a point where I was able to sustain myself as a free dancer? I read this book, which is called The Right Brain Business Plan by Jennifer Lee. She's an American coach. Um, I like my first attempts at self-training. This one went, went very well, because get what? I did the, talk, I did the work. <laughs> I read the book, and I did the homework. And at the end of it, I had this crazy-looking business plan that I brought here for you. If you want to pass it along, I brought three funny-looking business plans. <laughs> and <laughs> please pass it along. Um, appreciate the na naivete of them. <laughs> Uh, they helped me make money and they helped me earn a living with my job, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, so they helped me, doing this business plan helped me get, say what my goal was and get to the end of the year uh, with that thing in mind and having uh, a route to follow. And I did it for many years uh, to follow. So, what is this business plan we're talking about? Are you familiar with a business plan? Does any one of you have ever seen a business plan? Okay, a good number of people. So this is the definition you can find on Wikipedia, and it's pretty accurate. It's a formal statement of business goals, reasons they're attainable, and plans for reaching them. It may also contain background information about the organization or team attempting to reach those goals. Except, I think, <laughs> this is the reaction of 95% of the creative types when they hear a formal statement. It's like, ooh, <laughs> no, no, nothing formal. I want to be a freelancer. I want to be a digital nomad. I want to kill it with my WordPress skills. I don't want a formal statement. Well, guess what? You don't really need it to be uh, so, uh, so formal. Uh, so I'll break it down in plain language. In Italian, we have this way of saying, parla come mangi, which means speak as you eat, simply. We eat simple food in, Ita in Italy, so speak as you eat, and this is how I break it down. Um, so it's a way to find clarity amongst all the wonderful ideas you might have. Creative types, and I include developers in this uh, category because all the Developers I know have notes and notes full of ideas for new plugins, how to contribute to another open source uh, project, uh, how they can improve their talks or stuff like that. So put them together, okay? Find some clarity in all those ideas that you have and pick the one that will successfully get to the end of the line. Um, you need to write them down. So ideas have this funny way of behaving. When there are too many of them in our brains, they tend to become all messed up, and they're all, you know, they tend to become one. So as soon as you have an idea, just write it down. It will help you also free space to have another awesome idea. And finally, it's a map. Uh, you know, it's like a GPS that will help you navigate your business when things will be unclear, 
and things will be unclear, believe me. So after working on a business plan of my own, uh, I came up with this definition, which sounds much better in Italian, but this is what I came up with in English. So it's a plan that will allow you to earn a living from the things you love doing, uh, and it includes goals you want to reach and metrics to check how you're doing. It's always important to check how you're doing, right? You don't just say what you want to do, but you check yourself against those goals. And since I am a creative, and I was happy with the book that I read, but I wasn't too happy with some of the methods and some of the exercises, I came up with my own method. So I wrote a book that it's available only in Italian in 2014, that it's called Who's Afraid of the Business Plan? And I created a class that was taken by about 200 people uh, online and offline. So what does a business plan look like? So if you're one of the people that raise their hand and say, yes, I saw a business plan, you probably have seen something like this, like a bunch of sheets that contain a lot of words and a lot of numbers. Uh, this is the business plan for Yahoo, for real. <laughs> you can find it on Flickr. Uh, so this is what a business plan looked like for me before I read the right brain business plans. I did a bunch of business plans in my life um, as an administrative manager. Uh, but these are also business plans. Uh, actually, in fact, these are two business plans for people that took my classes. And today they earn a living from what they love doing and they put on car, how do you call this, cardboard stock? Yeah. And um, I would say that's a hen, uh, that's another word that I don't know in English, handkerchief? What's that? Handkerchief. handkerchief. Yeah. And stuff. So they, they do make a living <laughs> with their business, uh, with a business plan that they put together like this. When we, when we did the course. So it really doesn't matter what it looks like, okay? Forget about it, the endless papers, words, numbers. You need a way, and it doesn't matter which one it is, to fix somewhere the ideas you have for your business. And it really doesn't matter the format. There are some sections that you always go through. And I'm really fond of this format because you can keep it on your desk and peruse it every time you need it. And you're going to need to do that all the time. Every time you need to take a decision for your business, you're going to look into your, into your business plan. And if it's you know easy, portable format, you can just keep it in your desk and use it. So I did it for five years. The, the funny-looking business plans that you Oh, I hope you're passing around were vital for my business. Um, so also, I must confess, in the first few uh, months of being um, a freelancer, I developed um, an insane passion for stationery, so I had a lot of cute stuff to use. <laughs> so this is also why they're so cute. Uh, and then in 2016 and 2017, I focused more on fina finances. I tweaked a little bit the target because at that point I wanted to cater to a different audience. But I put down the numbers, so you know the mission was there, values were there. I just tweaked a little bit the finances. It was important for me to know how I was going to make money. So it doesn't matter if you go for a classical approach or if you go for the funny looking <laughs> website, I keep saying website, there, there's something Freudian about it because I don't build websites anymore. So the business plan. <laughs> uh, so use the format that you want, but start doing it as soon as possible. So if you have pen and paper here or fire up your laptop, open up a note, every time I tell a rule, just scribble down some words that come to you as soon as you hear me saying something, and you got yourself a draft for a business plan. So let's do it. The first rule of the business plan is do it. We all talk. It's amazing. Even in big businesses, I used to work for a company in Italy that, like the first year in business, they had about a million euros turn around. How do you call it in English? turnover, and they didn't have a business plan. So it doesn't matter, they started out strong, they failed in about three years. So a lot of companies talk about a business plan, not a lot of companies have one. <laughs> and so this is why a lot of freelancers don't have one, because we think, eh, 
I don't need a free a, a business plan. I'm just, you know, I'm going to do 30,000 in a year, so who cares? Well, you want to make those 30,000, so you better get yourself a plan for making that. And really <laughs> do it. Remember, 2012 minus 14,000, 2013 plus 18,000. The last year I was in business as a freelancer, I made more than 50,000 euros, which is about 20,000 euros more than most of my colleagues in Italy, because I had a plan. I had a goal and I had a vision. This is the founding concept of any business plan. Uh, everything else comes from that. You need to define who you are and why you do what you do. Uh, you use whatever method you want. This is a judgment-free zone. You want to do a meditation. You want to do a vision board. You want to ask your friends, what do they think you do? That's a very interesting question to ask your friends and family if they know what you're doing, if they can define what you're doing. Uh, write down 10,000 words. I don't care. Just tell yourself, and then you will tell the word who you are and what you're doing. It cannot be, I'm here to make money. Well, duh, we're all here to make money. None of us, unfortunately, lives off love and air. So <laughs> you, making money is your goal, but also think how you want to help other people. What can you really give to them? Uh, be very careful. This is a very powerful statement. So be very careful what you pick for. So my first mission was, um, help people give birth to their online presence uh, in an affordable and easy way. Result, I just got pinged for 200 euros project with a two weeks <laughs> time to build the website. But I said it, I said affordable, easy. So people were asking for affordable, easy. And it just took tweaking that a little bit and say something like, uh, help creative people build an online presence to get me a completely different kind of requests. So this is a powerful statement. Be very careful. Pick a target. There can be only one. The easiest way to not make money is trying to sell to everyone. Everyone is not a target. A target has a name, has a age, has a place of living. Uh, they are a person. Uh, Google uh, business personas or ideal clients, you'll find a lot of templates on, uh, on Google. Uh, define them as precisely as possible. If you already have clients, it might be easier because you might see patterns emerging. If you don't have clients yet, work a little bit with your fantasy, but also make it believable. Like, I wish I could say that all my clients had super Instagrammable studios and amazing branding. They didn't. Some of them that had horrible logos that were very tricky to work with, and they worked out of the cabinet or <laughs> basement or stuff like that. Uh, so that person, that target, is a real person. And they have a problem, and you can solve the problem. So this takes us to the offer. So the offer, when you start thinking about your offer, forget about yourself. You're not important here. Your skills are, but the important thing is that you can solve someone else's problem. Immerse yourself in your potential client word. What are their pains? What are their problems? What are they lacking? This is where you come in. So I have a very hard time when people say, uh, turn your passion into a job. Well, if your passion is a business model that doesn't make any money, don't. <laughs> You'll be broke. <laughs> make sure that your passion is marketable and someone needs it, OK? Um, so. Solving someone's problem, it's a good way to make money because they need you, they need your skills. So pick a target, offer them something, make them an offer they can't refuse. So you now you have a mission, you have an offer, 
you have a target, you're good at what you're doing, you need to market yourself and sell yourself. Now, basically, every creative person I met in my life hates this. And I think Alex has a business that is called Marketing for People That Hates Marketing. Is it true, Alex? I'm seeing you. <laughs> you have a business that is, the, the tagline is something like Marketing for People That Hates Marketing. Yeah. Everyone hates marketing who's not in marketing. <laughs> so, um, you know, even if you check all the boxes, you have the product, you have the pricing, the pricing is right, you have the skills, you still need to tell people that they need to buy your product. Otherwise, again, broke. You have a passion, you have a hobby, you don't have a job. Um, so, at first, you'll probably be getting a lot of work by word of mouth. At some point, it won't be enough. So, you need to go and get clients. I, I so wish WordCamps had more talks about sales techniques because sometimes we get the marketing right and then when it's time to close the deal, we completely miss it. So sales and marketing are important. Again, you might be the best developer in the world and you find that solution to, I don't know, a massive problem in WordPress, but if you don't tell people that you do have that thing, that you do have that service or offer, it's useless. All your skills are basically wasted. So, hustle. I love it. I, I'm a massive fan of rap music and hip hop and so I always, when, I, when I think about myself at the end of the month getting my money and I'm really seeing myself like in a rap video making it rain like the dollars everywhere <laughs> you put, like envision yourself in that position envision yourself as a rapper with a dope chain made of 24 karat gold, because that's the goal. That's the goal. You want to make money out of your business. You want to make money out of the skills you have. Um, so the first year, as I said, it was 18,000 euros. It felt good. It was a bit, you know, it was comfortable, not, not really making it rain with 18,000 euros. Uh, but then I said, I think I deserve more. So I doubled my prices, and people kept buying my services. And then the third year, I kept doubling my prices, and people still wanted to buy my services. So I learned that the first year in business, I severely <laughs> underestimated my services, and I sold website for, I don't want to say how much, because it's degrading for the whole industry. So the first year, I worked on a staggering number of websites. I put on like 24 websites in a year. I mean, if that's not hassling, I don't know what it is. And then the last year as a freelancer, I made the same amount of money with five websites. So it's possible. Raise your prices. Don't be afraid. Uh, and also track everything. I bet you're spending way more money than you think you are. It's that new uh, laptop, it's that conference, it's that ebook, it's that, oh God, that pen is so nice, I must have it on my desk. It's the new, I don't know, adapters, and then you keep losing them, and then you keep buying them back. All of the money comes up to a huge sum at the end of the year. So track everything, track income. Track expenses, check your cash flow. As a freelancer, we have one of the worst business models ever because we get paid only when we deliver and we get paid only for billable hours. So check the cash flow at all times. And you need a squad. Again, big uh, rap and pop music. So, you know, Taylor Swift. Do you know who Taylor Swift is? Yeah. She's a pop singer. She has this Instagram account that is full of squad goals, where she takes pictures of herself with her models, the singers. That's your mindset. You need a squad. You need people that will help you get to the end line. There might be some other professionals. You might need an attorney, an accountant, a notary. It depends on the, where you live and what kind of business you have. But you need contractors. Don't think you can do it all by yourself. You're probably going to end up messing functions.php <laughs> file, and you're going to make a mess. 
So get yourself a developer. If you're not a developer, get yourself a designer. If you're not a designer, uh, you need support from your family. Especially the first year in business, they won't see you a lot. <laughs> so you need to make sure you're solid <laughs> there. Uh, friends, peers, people to talk about your business and rant and vent if necessary. And you need to know your competition. So for years, I was in this wonderful pink land full of unicorns where I thought competition didn't exist. We were all peers. We were all sharing our knowledge. There was enough work for everyone. And then I went to the other side. I wanted all my competitors to die a slow and horrible death. <laughs> so I could get more work. <laughs> because at that point, I was getting more money, and I wanted more money. So the truth is somewhere in between. Of course, competition exists. Uh, you have to do research on your competition. You have to see what they do, how they do it, what they don't do. Spot the opportunities in the things they don't do. And even if your competition has the exact same skills that you have, and they sell the exact same thing that you do, you have to find a way to position yourself in a different niche. Uh, use a different tone, different branding, go for different things. Don't copy the competition. Those things are so lame. Everyone will find out in about five minutes. The internet is a very small place. <laughs> so if you start copying your competition, they'll find out in about a week, probably. Don't do that. Study them to do differently and to do better. And finally, be yourself. So when my kid, who's actually the reason why I had a business uh, in the first place, uh, making websites, uh, had this wonderful book when he was growing up that was called You Are You and You Are Special. And it is true. You are special. Now go back to your business plan. See if the person, the professional that you are, that emerges from those pages, is really you. Because if you need to go against your values, your beliefs, your lifestyle, the things you like doing to get to that goal, it's going to be very hard. Because it's, going, it's really hard to pretend being someone you're not. So your business should reflect who you are. That will make it a lot easier, because you need your strength to get to the end line. And this is how you do it. If you need to pretend. So for example, when, in my business, everyone had this lovely, uh, the business was making websites for other women in their 30s and 40s that were going through a, a career change. That was my target. So in this target, if you wanted to sell something to those ladies, you needed to have a super cute Instagram uh, <laughs> profile. You needed to have uh, funny videos on Facebook. You needed to be really witty on Twitter. I'm not like that. <laughs> so I did it for two years, and I was like, no, that's not me, <laughs> that's not me. So I also had to change a little bit my business because I couldn't keep up with that kind of communication. Okay, so look carefully through this business plan and say, is this me? I am willing and able to provide a service like this? Then yes, go for it, otherwise change it. So now there is really one thing left to do, is just go to your business plan. Thank you. I'll be here all weekend uh, at the SiteGround booth, so if you are more comfortable on one of one conversation, just come look for me at the booth. We're here at the Rocket. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this insightful and inspirational talk. Thank you. I actually was wondering, um, when building a business, uh, have you always looked into your business model, what actually is the foundation of business plan and its core value proposition design where you determine your content strategy and your audience. I don't think I got the question. Like you, you asked if I also looked into the business model? If, 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 you, before build, if, doing... if you build a business model before okay. you went into mm. the business plan, 
<sighs> and and within the model, um, look into the value proposition design to identify your audience and your content strategy. I wish I could say I did. It would make me look very cool. I didn't. <laughs> I just. You know, for the first part of it, I wing it, and I did horribly. And then I thought that doing a business plan would be enough for me. It was, especially because the business model was pretty clear, a freelance web designer. So I didn't really reinvent, didn't need to reinvent the wheel. The wheel was already there. Uh, what I did look into was my um, value proposition. And this is why also I worked with a very specific target. And the very specific target was someone like me that didn't have the technical knowledge to do what I was able to do. Uh, so I worked, I started my business when I was about 38. Um, I was going through um, a, a relocation. I moved to another country. Uh, my marketable skills for what I did in Italy were not so easily marketable in Israel. Um, so I... You know, I played around with it when I was in Italy as a freelance and doing it as a side gig. And then when I decided to go on business, it was also because I couldn't find anything better to do in Israel that would have paid me good money and also allowed me to go to the beach when I wanted to, <laughs> which was very important. And, um, and so I found out that at the same time, that was, you know, the first... Uh, years of this decade, being a woman and running an online business in Italy, it wasn't so common. So the target was already there. I just needed to reach out and grab it, basically. Uh, and I did so by writing on my blog, for example, uh, and sharing my own experiences as a new business owner. So. So the business plan was already a step up on my planning, but I didn't go through all that planning. Uh, by the way, uh, what's your name? Michael. Michael is referring to the business model canvas, I think, which is a very important tool also that you should use, especially if you have an idea for a product or for something that is more innovative than being a freelance web designer. So there's a, a canvas, you can print it out on a big, piece of paper. It has nine keys, I think, nine areas uh, that you will fill. That's more or less the same sections that I told you about. There's, a, uh, there's also a book called uh, Business Model You. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, tweet about it after the talk because those are very, uh, very good sources to get information about it. Um, so yeah, that's that answer to the question. Okay. <laughs> I think we have other few minutes for questions. Hi. Hey, uh, Damien, thank you very much uh, for your talk, Francesca. Where are you? Here I am. Hi. <laughs> I'm, Sorry. One of those, I'm one of those freaks that really enjoys marketing. Could you give us some examples of hustle that you've had to okay. endure? First of all, I use my kid. i not endorsing this. <laughs> But the dude got me a lot of money. <laughs> he, now more than he did. <laughs> He's super cute. He's very nerdy. He enjoys computers and stuff since he was a little kid. So, you know, I posted and that felt horrible now that I think about it. So you do this only if you're very comfortable with this. So like he was playing with his computer. I was working on my computer and I would take a picture of the two of us and be like, working hard or stuff like that, which was super embarrassing. Like, how would you do that to your kid? So <laughs> I did that because I, I really like money. I wanted to make good money. So I did that, which is something that I suggest you do a, if you're very comfortable, B, if your kid is okay with that. <laughs> uh, the other thing I did is was blogging. Blogging was very a very good strategy for me. Uh, when I started writing my blog, again, there weren't many women in business uh, in Italy that were having online businesses, so we kind of uh, banded together, and I created a website for a creative female in Italy that it's called uh, CPUB, Casa Più Bottega, which in Italian means uh, studio and home. 
uh, where we started sharing our knowledge. It's completely volunteer run. Uh, it started out as, oh God, we need a place to cry. And it has now 60,000 <laughs> readers every month in this super tiny, specific niche that it's creative female entrepreneurs in Italy, which is a kind of a big deal. Um, so blogging, definitely. I hate social media, <laughs> so I, I did Facebook, I hired someone to follow my page and I got good results from that, but I hated doing it. Uh, again, get yourself a squad, a social media manager. If you hate doing social media, hire a social media manager. Um, I spoke at conferences, so I lived in Israel. And then my business started picking up a little bit, so they started inviting me to conferences in Italy. Doesn't matter. Like, Yorkshire Pudding Fair, I'm going to go. <laughs> Do you want me to talk about websites? No problem. Is this 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people? It doesn't matter. I'm going to go. I'm going to talk about websites. I'm going to talk about why a website is so important for freelancers and what you should have and what you shouldn't and stuff like that. So I took every opportunity uh, to talk about websites, so blogging, social media. I did horribly with a newsletter, although everyone was like, create a list, get a list, get people on your list, which is very important, but I didn't know how to do it, so I failed misery at that. <sighs> Networking. There are groups of uh, female freelancers in Italy, and I also used to go there. That wasn't a really good target for me because there were a lot of beginners and they all wanted to work together for free. No! <laughs> Guess what? Again, make it rain. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Did that answer to your question? Okay. And I think we had a question here, if we still have time. And please come and ask me about all the other failures that I didn't put in this presentation because I still wanted to look good. <laughs> but if you want, I'll be here the whole weekend. So don't be afraid. I screwed up so many times. Just come and ask me. I'm sure I have an example. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah that was a great presentation. Thanks. Thank you. Um, one of the things I've struggled with um, as a freelancer is I, I've tried to kind of narrow down and find a niche and, you know, that's really good advice. But I think there's a point where you have to start saying no to people um, oh, yeah. if you're a bit of a generalist. I'm just wondering what your experience was sort of when you did find a, a more narrow scope um, turning people down, potential clients, and maybe deflecting them to, to other um, people who can help. I, I, wanna, I, I want to look good, so I want to say that I refer them to other people, but I'm like, no, the other people have to work hard. Like, if they want to find the clients, they have to find them themselves. <laughs> so at the beginning, I was referring people to other, to other um, freelancers. And guess what? Also, those other freelancers wanted to grow. So they didn't want to do... In Italy, it's very common to do websites for 1,000 euros. Like, very sim... No, I wouldn't say very simple. Sometimes people do very complex websites for 1,000 euros. So, you know, you refer them to the people that do websites for 1,000 euros, and guess what? They also want to do the 5,000 euros uh, websites, and they will not refer them back to you. So, like, uh-huh, you have to work hard. Find your niche, find your clients. <laughs> but, yeah, referrals are a good thing. If you have a good group of people that you know they're generally going to share clients with you, so you can put together a good group of people that refer to each other, that's great. I wasn't so lucky, I actually had some of the people I referred uh, clients to, then it came back and beat me on parts that we cannot mention. Uh, so uh, it really depends. The other thing you can do is create a product. So if you find that a lot of people ask you for customization of uh, Genesis themes or DV or whatever, you can create a product where you go, for example, uh, through some steps where they'll say which template they want, what font, what colors, and then at the end of the process, you charge them a fee, and that's very easy to put together. You can even hire a junior 
professional to do that for you and split the, the revenue and stuff like that. Um, also, this thing about saying no, it's again something that people are like, you have to say no more, but I want to pay the bills. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so it's a tricky one. It's another thing that I think a lot of people say to make themselves look good. In fact, very few people turn down job, <laughs> jobs, especially as freelancers. So don't feel bad if you sometimes still get a crappy client that it's not really up to what you want to project about yourself <laughs> to the world. Sometimes you really need that thousand euros to go more to the beach. So <laughs> does that answer? Yeah. And I can deflect that to someone else because I don't want to do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, if, it's, if it's something that you completely don't want to do, then by all means, pass it along to someone else. But if it's more like, you know, more a question of, this is not exactly what I want in my portfolio, or this is not exactly the prices I'm going to charge now, well, that really depends on what you're going through at that moment. I think the time's up. So thank you very much. <laughs> oh, let's go to the side.